After noticing strange bumps in their backyard, this couple discovers a buried car and calls the cops for answers. But the following day, in the midst of an investigation, the husband screams, I knew it, right after a suspicious phone call and leaves the house. When Emily and James Porter decided to beautify their home, they had no idea what they were going to discover. The decision to renovate the backyard was a compromise to the biggest fight that rocked the Porter's marriage to its core. The young couple had only been married for eight months, but their marriage had been fraught with many challenges and difficulties. Both parties were already nursing secret doubts and fears that they had made the wrong decision by getting married. They'd hoped that a project at home might bring them closer together after their biggest argument yet. But when they started digging, they found something that shocked them and made them question everything they knew about each other. Their troubles began a year ago when James introduced Emily to his parents, Cheryl and Henry. Although she tried her best to make a great first impression, something about Emily rubbed James's parents wrong and they didn't hesitate in making their displeasure known to the young couple. James stood firm, telling his parents they'd have to accept Emily if they wanted him in their lives. After some tense weeks, his parents finally relented and even helped the couple buy their first home as a gesture of goodwill. But despite their outward support, Emily still felt a coldness from James's parents that she couldn't quite shake off. Not wanting to stir up more trouble, James chose to ignore the possibility that his parents still held negative feelings toward Emily. He hoped that with time, any lingering animosity would fade away. What he didn't realize was that things were about to get even more complicated. Like all couples do, Emily and James had their disagreements. But during a particularly heated argument, she blurted out something she'd been holding back. I hate this house. It was a raw, unfiltered moment, revealing her true feelings about the home James's parents had helped them buy. Emily had kept quiet about her displeasure to avoid upsetting the delicate peace she had with James's parents. Finally realizing how she felt, James suggested, why don't we make it our own? Let's remodel it together, starting with the backyard. His voice carried a hopeful note. A bit calmer and intrigued by the idea, Emily agreed, that could work. It would be like putting our own stamp on the place. As the couple were both gardening lovers, they agreed unanimously that the backyard would be the starting point for their renovations. They drew plans, spoke to contractors, and finally kicked off their scheme to beautify their home. So one sunny day with plans and tools ready, they started with their beloved garden. This will be great, James said as they watched the excavator make its first dig into the earth of their backyard. Watching the soil turn, Emily felt a genuine smile spread across her face. I'm actually excited about this. It feels like we're finally building something together. With each scoop of dirt, her optimism grew. Little did she know that their digging would soon reveal something that would challenge everything they thought they knew about their new home. All of a sudden, the excavator halted, and the operator motioned urgently for Emily to come over. Puzzled and slightly anxious, she hurried to the edge of the dug-up pit. Her eyes widened as she took in the sight before her. Overcome with shock, she screamed for James, her voice echoing sharply against the quiet of the afternoon. James sprinted from the house, his face etched with concern. Are you okay? He called out, scanning her for any sign of injury. Instead of responding, Emily just pointed towards the ground. Following her gaze, James's breath caught in his throat as he cursed under his breath. There, protruding from the muddy earth, was the edge of a rusty, mud-caked metal object. The three of them, Emily, James, and the operator, all stood in silence, the tension palpable. It can't be, right? Emily's voice quivered with disbelief. Let's find out, the operator replied, breaking the quiet. Emily and James stepped back, holding hands tightly, a mix of fear and anticipation numbing their senses as the machine resumed its work. As the operator carefully cleared more soil, the outline of a bumper, a hood, and then the unmistakable shape of an old car emerged. Staring at the car, Emily's voice was a mix of awe and apprehension. How could an entire car end up buried in our backyard? She turned to James, searching his face for answers. James shrugged, equally baffled. Maybe it belonged to the previous owners, he suggested, trying to rationalize the bizarre find. But who buries a car? His voice trailed off as he pondered the implications. The deeper the excavator dug, the more certain he felt that this discovery might bring them more questions than answers. The car was an old model, possibly from the 1970s, and it was surprisingly in good condition, seeing as it had been buried for several years. Curious to uncover whatever secrets the vehicle held, Emily, James, and the operator got to work on clearing the soil away. They found the car door locked, and the windows were too caked with mud for them to see inside. Excited at the prospect of treasure, Emily and the operator overrode James's call for caution and insisted they open the door. Bowing to popular opinion, 
James managed to pry the driver's side door open with a crowbar. A musty smell wafted out, mixed with the scent of the damp earth. As the interior came into view, their excited and curious looks turned into looks of horror and dismay. As the interior became clearer, they found the skeletal remains of a person in the driver's seat, still buckled in. Emily screamed and stumbled back in horror while James stood frozen, his brain working overtime to comprehend the scene that was in front of him. As they stared at the bones that were right in front of them, it became clear that this was no ordinary buried treasure. Their entire backyard, or perhaps even their house, was a crime scene. With shaky hands and voices, they explained the situation to the dispatcher who promised that help was on the way. In what felt like the longest wait of their lives, they held on to each other, united in shock at the horror that lay in their backyard. Soon, their once quiet backyard buzzed with the activity of arriving law enforcement. Police cars lined the street and officers, along with forensic experts, swarmed over their property. Tape was strung around their yard, and detectives began their meticulous work, taking photographs and notes, combing through every inch of the car and surrounding soil. The whirlwind of police activity inevitably drew the neighborhood's attention. Curious neighbors and passers-by gathered, some snapping photos and others whispering theories. Their voice is a constant murmur at the edge of James and Emily's property. Social media buzzed with speculation, fueled by the images and rumors circulating online. Amid this chaos, James and Emily fielded a barrage of phone calls from concerned relatives and friends to whom they could only repeat that they were as in the dark as everyone else. The speculation was rampant. Who was the deceased? Why was the car buried? Their once peaceful existence seemed a distant memory now, as their home became the epicenter of a mystery. They felt a mix of astonishment and distress, their lives disrupted by the grim discovery beneath their backyard. Later that day, amidst the ongoing commotion, a police officer approached them. She introduced herself as Detective Laura Smith and offered the first piece of solid information since the car was unearthed. The vehicle you found is a 1972 Ford Pinto, she explained, reported stolen nearly 40 years ago. Detective Smith assured them that more details would follow as the investigation progressed, promising to update them after preliminary inquiries were completed. The presence of the skeletal remains meant it was highly likely there was a murder, and the police would remain in their hair for a little while longer to gather clues and look for evidence. The backyard area was also cordoned off as an active investigation site. As the investigation progressed, they discovered more about the car and its occupants. The skeletal remains were identified as Richard Bell, a local man who had vanished in the late 1970s. Bell was a prominent figure in the community, and his sudden disappearance had stirred much local speculation and intrigue. At the time, suspicion had fallen heavily on his much younger wife, whom many believed had married him for his wealth and possibly had a hand in his demise to inherit his estate. The police had pursued this angle, but without concrete evidence, their suspicions remained unproven, and the investigation eventually stalled. Following years of living under a cloud of suspicion and community disdain, Richard Bell's wife eventually moved away, leaving the mystery of her husband's disappearance unresolved. With her departure, the case faded from public attention and was all but forgotten until now. When James heard the name Richard Bell, a visible change came over him. His expression clouded and his posture stiffened, he seemed to retreat into himself. His reaction did not go unnoticed by Emily, who saw her husband's usual openness replaced by a sudden unsettling distance. James's behavior grew increasingly peculiar in the hours that followed, his mind seemingly preoccupied with thoughts he wasn't ready to share. Before the police concluded their initial examination and prepared to leave, Emily noticed James approach Detective Smith. She watched from a distance unable to hear the details but catching the serious tone of his voice. He leaned in close, his words hushed and urgent, sounding distinctly like a question. Emily's curiosity deepened, especially when she saw Detective Smith nod back and respond with, I will call you and let you know next morning. When the last of the officers finally left, James and Emily collapsed on their bed in exhaustion. They couldn't believe the day they had. They held each other tightly, each lost in their thoughts. The next morning, the sun's early rays did little to lift the somber mood in the Porter household. Emily woke to find James already out of bed, pacing the living room with a cup of coffee in hand, his demeanor still tense. The anticipation of Detective Smith's call hung heavily in the air, intensifying the silence between them. As they sat down for a quiet breakfast, Emily couldn't shake the feeling of unease. She broached the subject gently. James, what did you ask Detective Smith yesterday? James hesitated, then sighed setting down his coffee. It's about the deceased man, Richard Bell. You see, he... Just then his phone rang, cutting off his words. James jumped up to answer it. 
Emily watched his face closely as he listened to Detective Smith on the other end. Suddenly, his expression changed dramatically. His eyes widened in shock and disbelief. As he hung up the phone, he gasped, I knew it! With those words, he stormed out the front door, leaving a stunned and bewildered Emily sitting at the table. Before she could comprehend what was going on, she heard the screech of their car in the driveway and James sped out to the street. Emily raced down the stairs, desperate to catch James. But when she flung open the door, Detective Smith stood there instead. Surprised and still trying to process her husband's abrupt departure, Emily hesitated before inviting the detective inside, hoping she might shed some light on the bewildering events of the past day. Detective Smith entered without a moment's pause, her expression stern. I need to speak with James immediately, she demanded, scanning the room as if expecting to find him hiding. He just left, Emily replied, her voice shaky with rising anxiety. He got a call and took off. I don't know where he went. The detective's brows furrowed and her tone took on an edge of frustration. Why didn't you tell us earlier about the connection between your husband and Richard Bell? She asked, her voice raising slightly. Emily felt a knot of dread tighten in her stomach. Connection! What are you talking about? Detective Smith sighed heavily, her frustration apparent. We found evidence linking Richard Bell directly to James's family. It seems there's more to your husband's past and his family's history with Bell than we were initially told. Emily's mind reeled. James hadn't mentioned anything about a personal connection to Richard Bell, only vague references to his grandfather. The implications of the detective's words were alarming, and she struggled to make sense of it all. Why didn't James tell you this? Detective Smith pressed, her gaze piercing. I don't know, Emily stammered, feeling overwhelmed. He never said anything to me about a direct link. Are you sure? The detective nodded, her expression grim. We're quite sure, and we need to find him to discuss this further. It's crucial he explains his side of the story. As Detective Smith's words sunk in, Emily realized the depth of the secrets James might have been keeping. She felt both betrayed and worried for her husband, uncertain of what he might be facing or what his sudden disappearance could mean. Despite her pleas, the detective refused to say any more. She insisted that Emily get James to see her as soon as he could before leaving. Emily was stunned. She had no idea what to do with the new information. What was the message that James received before he stormed out in that manner? What did the dead bones in their backyard have to do with her in-laws? With so many questions swirling in her head, she tried her husband's cell several times to no avail. Finally frustrated, she snatched up her purse and walked out of the house, determined to find answers to her questions. A few hours later, Emily was in her mother-in-law's kitchen, relaying the horrifying events of the past day. When she reported what the detective had said, her mother-in-law turned white. Worried, Emily stopped and gripped her hand. Are you okay, Cheryl? She nodded slowly as she flitted through memories. She had vague memories of her husband having an old friend in that area called Richard, who disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Emily sensed she was getting closer to the truth. Where is Henry? She asked. Slowly, Cheryl replied, I don't know. He received a message and ran out of here like the devil was on his tail. Do you think... Cheryl trailed off, unable to finish her question. I'm sure there is a reasonable explanation, Emily said, holding her mother-in-law's hands in comfort. Her heart raced in fear, but she refused to show it. She believed there had to be a reasonable explanation. She just needed her husband and father-in-law to provide them with it. The two wives waited for days, to no avail. Emily dodged Detective Smith's calls, afraid she was further implicating her family by refusing to speak to the officers. Finally frustrated, she decided to take matters into her own hands. Together with Cheryl, they decided to dig into Henry's past and see if there was anything that could point to Richard. They searched through old family records, diaries, and old photo albums, hoping they would find some sort of clue that would explain Henry's connection to Richard Bell. Their efforts paid off when Cheryl found an old, yellowwood letter hidden in a box filled with old receipts. With trembling hands, she opened the letter and they read it together, with Emily standing over Cheryl's shoulder. The letter was dated a month before Richard's disappearance. As they read, the two women stared in confusion and determination. The letter provided some insight, but it didn't tell the whole story. However, it hinted at threats due to a business deal that went south. Together, they scoured the attic for more letters or correspondence between Richard and Henry. An hour later, they sat in the dust, filthy, but finally understanding everything that had happened. One of Henry's old colleagues introduced Henry and Richard to each other. As like-minded, business-oriented people, they soon hit off and became business partners. As their business deals flourished, their friendship grew stronger. One day, Richard ran into an old friend from college who introduced him to a real estate deal that was sure to provide huge returns. 
The deal appealed to Richard, but not to Henry. They disagreed fiercely about becoming a part of the real estate scheme. In the end, the disagreement caused a rift between them. About a month after they went their separate ways, Richard reached out to Henry for help. He realized that Henry was right in calling the deal a bad one. Unknown to Richard, he had gotten involved with a scam. His college buddy had paraded him as the face of the real estate scheme and scammed a bunch of gang members of huge sums of money. When the scam went bust, the gang members began threatening Richard, demanding he pay them back their investment. All his attempts at explaining his innocence fell on deaf ears. Scared for his life, Richard reached out to Henry, hoping his old buddy would provide him with much-needed insight on how to deal with his problem. Unfortunately, Henry's suggestions didn't do anything to alleviate the problem. Finally, Henry suggested Richard go into hiding while they figured out how to look for his old college buddy. While reading through the letters, Emily's phone rang suddenly, startling them both. On the other end was James, who told her to come to the police station. Out of their minds with fear, Emily and Cheryl scrambled to the police station. They were directed to an office where James, Henry, and Detective Smith sat. With the party complete, Henry told the police officers about his relationship with Richard. His explanation corroborated the letters Emily and Cheryl had read in the attic. As he spoke, they produced the letters they had the forethought to take from the house in their haste. Henry explained that he had no idea the gang members had caught up to Richard. Richard had only gone underground for a week when Henry lost all contact with him. He waited for years, but nothing came. Even when their other investments yielded profits, he waited, but didn't hear from his friend again. After a while, he gave up, assuming Richard decided it was better to stay hidden forever than to return. He broke down in tears at the knowledge that his longtime friend was missing. He blamed himself, thinking that if he had insisted that Richard go to the police, perhaps he would still be alive. The police asked them why they disappeared if they were innocent. James explained that he was familiar with the name but wanted to confirm it with his father before speaking. When he asked his father and received a cryptic response, he knew something was off. Rather than involve his wife or mother in a situation he wasn't completely aware of, he decided to handle it himself. He found his father at his favorite fishing spot and dragged the story out of him. Only then did they return to the police station so his father could tell the police uh, everything he knew. He apologized to his wife and mother for worrying them. He only thought to solve the issue without considering their feelings. With the information James and his father provided, Detective Smith investigated the matter further and found it to be true. She was also able to track down the gang members who had threatened Richard. Unfortunately, they had already passed away, making it impossible to bring anyone to justice. However, the clarification of events allowed the police to close the case on Richard Bell's disappearance. The rumors and gossip eventually died down and life began to return to a semblance of normalcy. James and Emily were determined to rebuild their lives. Their brief encounter with death showed them how petty and minute their issues were in the face of larger issues. Cheryl and Henry finally accepted Emily with open arms, grateful to her for standing by the family in their toughest time. Together, they were determined to ensure the past would remain in the past and not overshadow their future. What a story. Could you imagine uncovering such secrets right in your own backyard? What would you do if a decades-old mystery suddenly surfaced, turning your life upside down? Tell us in the comments below. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more thrilling tales. See you in the next video.